Hello viewers, this is Angela Murjani from Kasturba Gandhi College in Hyderabad. I welcome you to today's session in which we are going to do a poem which is a celebration of womanhood. I'm sure that you will not only enjoy the poem but will find it quite intriguing and charming because it is written by a poet who is of Indian origin called Sujata Bhatt. Sujata Bhatt was born in 1956 in Ahmedabad and then went on to grow up in Pune from where she moved to the United States when her parents migrated to that country. Since then, she has evolved into a poet who has several international accomplishments to her credit, having won also the Commonwealth Poetry Prize in addition to many other noteworthy awards for her literary efforts. She currently lives in Germany, where she is a freelance writer, along with her husband and her daughter. Sujata Bhatt has done a fair deal of translation work as well, translating from German to English and also from Gujarati to English. Combining Gujarati and English is what she finds very powerful and she has stated that she writes Indian English rather than Anglo-Indian poetry. She is a widely published poet all across the English-speaking world. In her poems, Sujata Bhatt explores the themes of love, violence, racism and several other childhood experiences that she had while growing up in India. She has gone on record to say that she does not understand why, but time and again her imagination is continually sparked by her childhood experiences in this nation. She believes that the childhood years of a person are full of some very special and magical moments and writers continuously go back to draw inspiration from these events in their childhood. And for her, because she had to leave India at a very early age, she finds that she remembers India more and more in her work as time passes by. The most noticeable aspect of Bhatt's poetry is her use of free verse wherein the words in her poem just seem to flow like one unending thought, like a stream of memories. The critic Michael Schmidt has noted that while the free verse is fast flowing and there seems to be an urgency for delivering the narrative, at the same time there's a sense of it being spoken very softly. There's a cadence to it which is natural and the diction that she uses is completely undecorated and unornamented. Without doubt, Sujata Bhatt is one of the most important and prominent living poets today, one whose poetry has a distinctive contemporary air about it. The tone of the poem is very simple and it seems to be consciously and deliberately chosen as an authentic vehicle to portray the simple life of a country girl living in rural India. Even though it's very simple, by the same token it is extremely profound because many of the simple things in life are equally profound. The poem is made up of 18 lines which consists of two sentences out of which only one sentence is complete. When the poet makes use of a sentence in which there are fragments and pays no attention to the grammatical correctness of the poem, such a technique in poetry is known as enjambment. In enjambment, what you get to see is what is actually going on in the mind of the speaker. So in a sense, the poet is trying to convey to us that grammar is not important, lexical correctness is not important, but what is most important is that the poet wants you to look into the mind of the poet and see exactly what's going on at that time. If you were to stop and think about your thoughts for a moment, you will find that the natural order in which they occur is very fragmented and disjointed. There is no continuity from one to the other that's logical. And in the same way, the reflection of thoughts from Sujata Bhatt's mind appears in the order in which she has them and in which she remembers them. 
this technique when it's used by a poet is called enjambment. Enjambment simply means that there is a long continuous sentence in which grammar is paid no attention to but what is focused upon is a series of thoughts that are coming to the mind of a poet. Bhatt has also been given the title of being a sensual poet because in this particular poem she makes great use of the sense of smell. She evokes several smells which create the environment which makes the setting of the poem and that setting is irreplaceable. In order to create that setting, those smells are essential and because of her effective use of imagery to capture those smells, Bhatt has been given the title of being a sensuous poet. The title of the poem, Muliebrity, is a Latin word that means womanhood. It stands for the state or the form of a woman and describes all the attributes or qualities of a woman's nature. In particular, it is a description of the feminine form of an adult woman as contrasted to that of a woman in the time of her maidenhood. To further explain it, just as the term masculinity is the coordinate term for the word femininity, so also the term virility is the coordinate term for muliebrity. I think that would explain it rather clearly. So, as the title indicates, the poem is about womanhood and the qualities of a woman. It was written in the early 60s and centers around one woman in particular against a rural Indian backdrop who performs the duty or the task that has been assigned to her with great joy and happiness even though that task is not normally seen as being very noble or pleasurable by most people. The poem talks about the raw power of a woman and how this force of nature seeps through even the most mundane of jobs that a woman might do. This young girl, a typical representative of a village woman, does a tedious job of collecting cow dung outside a temple day after routine day. Yet, she does it exhibiting greatness and power. The poet is deeply touched by the commitment and the dedication of this young girl. When she sees the young girl's positive demeanor and attitude towards her work, it touches her and moves her profoundly. She feels that it's not the work which one does that's important, but one's attitude towards it that really signifies something important. And the attitude which this young girl collecting cow dung reveals through her gestures, through her bodily language, speaks something deeply into the life of the poet, which causes her to reflect upon it and to write this poem, Muliebrity. Now let's look at the poem, Muliebrity by Sujata Bhatt. I have thought so much about the girl who gathered cow dung in a wide round basket along the main road passing by our house and the Radha Vallabh temple in Maninagar. I have thought so much about the way she moved her hands and her waist and the smell of cow dung and road dust and wet canna lilies, the smell of monkey breath and freshly washed clothes, and the dust from crow's wings, which smells different. And again the smell of cow dung as the girl scoops it up, all these smells surrounding me separately and simultaneously. I have thought so much, but have been unwilling to use her for a metaphor for a nice image, but most of all unwilling to forget her or to explain to anyone the greatness and the power glistening through her cheekbones each time she found a particularly promising mound of dung.
The first four lines of the poem sets the scene for the reader and we come to know the location of where this event happened that has been deeply etched on the memory of the poet. It happened in fact in Mani Nagar, a suburb of Ahmedabad where the poet was born and lived the first few years of her life. The poet watched as a young girl picked up cow dung. In the olden days and even today in some villages of India, cow dung is used as fuel for cooking. It was also spread on the floors of homes as it was believed to be a disinfectant and a pesticide, apart from being an important ingredient in the rituals of Hindu worship. It was normal for this task to be assigned to the women of gathering dung, then shaping it into cakes and drying it for future use. The fact that cow dung has a religious significance in India does not escape the attention of even the casual reader. The image of dung as fuel or energy combined with its religious meaning as part of all purification rituals makes the act of collecting it even more important as the woman is the one who brings the energy into the home. It is as if collecting it and burning it, she consumes herself for the sustenance of her family. She is also the purifying factor in many a home. Perhaps the poet felt revulsion for the task that the girl was doing. But we also know that that revulsion turned to compassion as she realized that she in her position would never be called to do the task which that girl was involved in. Her social positioning had kept her in a safe place from where she could observe and feel sorry for the girl who had to pick up the dung, but she knew that she would never be called upon to do such an act herself. And this is probably the reason why this scene had such a deep impact upon the mind of Sujata Bhatt that she remembered it long years after the event had actually occurred. In the poem, the poet constantly repeats the phrase, I have thought, I have thought so much. And this is just in order to tell us the deep impact which this sight had upon the poet, that she constantly goes back to the memory of this vision that she had of the girl who was compelled by her position in society to be somebody who would collect the excreta of animals. It is with a deep tone of sadness that the poet recalls how the body and hand movements of the young girl were so graceful. She was possessed of an elegance, a fluid body movement, which perhaps could be better put to use in any other act. Surely she was not made for the purpose of collecting cow dung. The poet then talks about a cocktail of smells that create an atmosphere that makes it impossible to replicate the scene possibly anywhere else in the world except in a similar rural setting. There is the smell of dung, the smell of monkey's breath, the smell from the dust of crow's feet and also the smell of freshly washed clothes and wet canna lilies. But the most overpowering smell of all is that of the dung. Could the poet be making a comment or a statement upon life? That life itself is full of many fragrances. Some of them are negative. Some of them are positive too. But in the end, looking back upon life, is it possible that the negative ones overpower the positive ones? Just like the smell of dung overpowers the smell of freshly washed clothes and wet canna lilies? Maybe this is a comment which the poet is making through this poem. Canna lilies are native to India. They are a hardy plant which grow under the harshest of circumstances. With little or no rainfall and hard ground, they yet thrive, blooming the most beautiful flowers and giving off a sweet fragrance. Perhaps this is another image for the young village girl. 
tall, proud and beautiful even in the midst of her circumstances. Even though those circumstances are so difficult, so non-conducive to her flourishing, yet she seems to bloom and thrive in the midst of them, just like the canna lily. In the last section of the poem, the poet describes how the memory of the girl has lingered with her. She shares how she has been unwilling to turn the girl into an image or a metaphor to use in any of her poetry. She feels that by doing this, she would be untrue to what she really saw when she pictured that girl in her imagination. She saw somebody who had greatness and who had power in her. And this shone through her body, through her facial expressions. Each time she saw a new mound of dung, she felt driven. She felt propelled to go and collect it and to gather it for her family. Reducing all of this to an image, the poet feels would not have been true to the memory of the young girl and the poet just finds herself unable to do so. There are several themes that Sujata Bhatt develops through this poem and they run simultaneously alongside one another. We will look at five of them for the purpose of this study. The first and the most important theme is the feminist one or the power of woman as it is demonstrated even in the title Muliebrity. The woman is the most pivotal symbol that the poet uses throughout this poem. She is depicted as being strong and powerful, untiring in her efforts to sustain her family, to collect food for her family, to be the driving force or the energy behind the movement of her family forwards and upwards. Her efforts are depicted as being untiring and often she never counts the cost to herself which are implied in that repetitive effort of sustaining her family. There are three supportive images which again contribute to the image of the woman as being very strong. The first one is the image of dung. Dung as used as a fuel which burns and consumes itself in order to give off heat or energy. And the woman is compared to that dung which she herself collects. Very often it is the woman who is the energy in a household or in a family. The second important image that the poet uses is that of the basket, like a basket which is a container for ingathering, for collecting. It's often the woman who collects all the loose threads of the family, all the things which are required. Every person, every individual, their needs, their wants, their requirements are all brought together by the woman. And the third important image is that of the canna lilies, which prosper and thrive even in the most difficult of circumstances. They give off their fragrance. Even though the ground and the atmosphere give them very little, they are yet willing to grow and give of themselves to the atmosphere around them. So these three images put together reveal the power of a woman that the poet would like to depict in this poem. The second important theme in this poem is the power of memory. In not wanting to turn the image of the girl into a metaphor, Sujata Bhatt is making a very important statement. What she is saying is that she will not compromise the picture of the girl because it has so deeply impacted her own thought life that way into the future she gets retrospective and she thinks back upon the power of that vision and what it did to stir in her own mind many thoughts about womanhood. There is a simple grandeur in the girl which she feels would be compromised if she would turn her into a metaphor. There is a danger that the metaphor would become more overpowering than the simple beauty of that girl engaged in a very mundane and repetitive task but doing it with joy and doing it with energy for the purpose that this task was involved in the sustenance of her family. And that's what she wants to preserve. Hence, she keeps repeating that she has 
thought about this girl so much. She has remembered her. She keeps saying, I have thought about her so much. And that is to let us know that there is a power in memory, that when something deeply impacts our lives, we've got to preserve that memory in order to preserve what that memory did to us to change our way of thinking, to change our thought process. And so that's another important theme of this poem. The third theme that the poem explores is the dignity of labor. Although the task which has been assigned to the young girl is very demeaning, she seems to always be doing it with happiness and enthusiasm. She never gives away to the people who are watching her that it's an odious task. She never exhibits any sign of repugnance towards this job of collecting cow dung. And the grace and the beauty and the power with which she does it belies the kind of task that she's doing. If somebody were to be watching her, they would never have guessed at what she was doing if they didn't know. That's the kind of joy that she brings to her work. And the poet seems to say that whatever we do, we need to maintain that attitude towards our work, which raises it above the level of where it's at. Even if it is at a low level, our attitude itself can raise the task that we are doing to a higher level if we enjoy it and do it with enthusiasm. The fourth and a very important theme in this poem is social injustice that stems from poverty. Perhaps one of the reasons that the poet was so deeply moved by this sight of a young girl collecting dung was precisely this. She could see that from her social positioning, she would never be called upon to do a job as menial or as degrading as that. And that's what makes her feel really sad. Both were girls, possibly of similar age, yet because of the poet's social positioning, she would never have to do this job. Whereas this girl brought up in a rural setting, perhaps struck by poverty, was compelled by her circumstances to take up this job. Even though the poet felt compassion, even though she was moved, the two are in two different segments of society where there cannot be any interaction between them. So although the poet would possibly have liked to go and help that girl, there are social trappings which prevent the crossing over of one to the other side. And this is the social injustice of our society which is brought out through this poem. Another very significant theme of the poem that comes through as a powerful sentiment through it all is that of contentment. This young girl who has been consigned to the task of picking up cow dung never seems to notice that there is another world on the edge or the periphery of her existence and that world is far more privileged than hers. She never thinks that there might be other opportunities, but she's happy and content with what her lot has given her. She seems never to aspire for anything greater, but is enthused by the next mound of dung that she spots, going towards it enthusiastically to collect it, because she knows that in doing so, she is adding to the sustenance of her family. And that seems to bring her all the joy that she needs for her life. There is no complaining. There is no grumbling about her lot in life. And definitely there are no comparisons with people who are more fortunate than herself. There is only a doing of that work which needs to get done in her life. There seems to be a comparison that the poet is making with the far more aspiring and aggressive urban woman of today 
who always wants more, who is always making comparisons with others. And in doing so, in the process, she loses her joy and her happiness. In that striving for more and more, she loses her sense of contentment. And perhaps in lifting up the contentment of this young girl, the poet is trying to tell us something that's very important, a message for the women of our times. To conclude, it seems like an incredible task that Sujata Bhatt has achieved in the small span of a poem of 18 lines that she could have done it successfully. She has covered several contemporary themes and drawn the attention of the readers, eliciting both admiration and compassion from us, while at the same time making us aware that there are other parallel expressions of womanhood in our society, that perhaps as one large section of society, we continuously remain apathetic or ignorant of. The poem Muliebrity compels us to look and to look again because these are eternal expressions of truths that have just found a different and a various expression in our society. And that is the main reason why Sujata Bhatt enjoys a kind of popularity that she does throughout the world because she is addressing issues in our modern society and for our contemporary minds.